All right, in this video, we're going to look at what if I give you a line and you have to write an equation for that line as opposed to be given an equation and have to graph that equation. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this line a couple different ways. We're going to write this line in point slope form, in slope intercept form, and in standard. So let's get started. We're going to start with point slope form. And so you're given this line and there's a bunch of points on this line. Uh, typically you would, you know, list all the points out. And there's one, there's two, four, there's four, five. There is, oh crud, I messed that up. Negative two, two. And then negative four, one. So there's five different points on that line. So with point slope form, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to pick a point on the line and then identify the slope and then you got your, your, your equation. So what I did was I picked negative 2, the one that I messed up, I picked negative 2, 2. And so for point slope form, it is y minus y1 equals the slope times x minus x1. And then what you do is you plug in a point. So the point that I picked is negative 2, 2. And you could plug in any point. Any point that's on that green line, you could pick any of those points that I have listed. And then the slope, we have to figure that out. So slope is rise over run. We go up and over. So we went up 1 over 2. So the slope for this is 1 half. 1 over 2. So we just plug in what we know. We know what the slope is. That's 1 half. And we know that x1 is negative 2. And we know that y1 is positive 2. So we're just going to plug that stuff into the equation. We get y minus 2 equals 1 half. And then x minus negative 2. And when you have minus a negative, that changes to a plus. So it will be x plus 2. And voila. There is your equation. You don't have to do any. Some kids will say, well, do I have to solve it? No, it's, it's there. You got it. That's the answer. You don't have to do anything else with that equation. So that's in point slope form. If we wanted to graph this thing in slope intercept form, we first have to identify the slope, which we already did. We know the slope is going to be 1 half. And then we have to figure out where is that y-intercept. Well, the y-intercept is right here. Circled it in red. The y-intercept is at 3. So in the equation, slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. So it's just going to be y equals 1 half x plus 3. And this is probably the one that students are the most comfortable with. It's pretty easy. If you know what the y-intercept is, you plug it in for b. If you know the slope, plug it in, boom. But I'll be honest, it's really no easier than point-slope form, other than the fact that it's shorter and there's less stuff to remember. But if you can remember the point-slope form, it's super easy as well, right? You just plug a point in, plug the slope in, you got it. You don't even need to know the y-intercept for that one. All right, so those are point slope form and slope intercept form if you're given a line coming up with the equation. So for standard form, once again, that one's negative 2, 2. For standard form, you start with slope intercept form. So that was y equals 1 half x plus 3. So to write an equation in standard form, it's hard to just do that from looking at the graph. There's not like a quick way to do that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of the fraction coefficients. So I see there's a 1 half there, and I want to get rid of that dividing by 2. And the way that I can do that is I'm going to multiply by 2. Cancel out dividing by 2, I'm going to multiply by 2. And when I multiply by 2, I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by 2. And when I do that, I end up with 2y on the left, and on the right, I'm going to distribute this 2 in, I get 
1x plus 6. All right. And then what that did was that took care of getting rid of the fractions. So if you have multiple fractions in here, what you do is you'd multiply by one of the denominators, and then you can multiply by the other denominator on the next step, and you'll get rid of all the fractions in front of x and y. Um, if, if, if the y-intercept is a fraction, that's okay. You don't have to worry about getting that to be a whole number necessarily. You can. It's the same. It'll be the same thing. Okay, and then the next step is get x and y on the same side. So typically what we'll do is we will subtract 1x. And yeah, you could just write it as x if you want, but 1x is also okay. And then what we end up with is negative 1x plus 2y equals 6. And so this is now in standard form, kind of. But typically, in standard form, by the way, is ax plus by equals c. So in this case, a is negative 1, b is 2, and c is 6. And it depends on, you know, some textbooks like it one way, some like it a different way. But the most common way is in standard form is a should be positive. And since a is negative here, we're going to fix that. So then the easiest way to do that is just multiply everything on both sides by negative 1. The negative 1 distributes in, we get 1x plus, excuse me, not plus, minus 2y equals negative 6. And so this would be the equation for that line in standard form. Um, and that's just it. You just plug it, uh, you start with the slope-intercept form, get rid of the fractions, and then set it uh, all the x and y's on one side. All right, and then a couple more things. Let's talk about parallel and perpendicular lines. So lines that are parallel have what type of slopes? And so if you've seen this before, you know that if lines are parallel, by the way, parallel means that these lines go in the same direction. So if you look at those slopes, they're running in the same direction. They have the same slopes. And lines that are perpendicular, if you forgot what perpendicular means, that means that they make a 90 degree angle when they cross. So this one uh, is maybe not as obvious, but these have opposite, which means one's positive and one's negative. Opposite, reciprocal. So, so what that means is let's assume that this line here, the slope would be two-thirds. So that means the other one would have to be opposite, so it would be negative. And then reciprocal just means you flip it up over, so it would be negative 3 over 2. That, that's what opposite reciprocal means. So we've got a couple examples here. Write an equation for the line parallel to y equals negative 5 over 6x plus 7 and passes through this point, negative 2, 4. Okay, so when it says it's parallel to this line, all I care about is the slope. I know that that slope is negative 5, 6. I'll write a little m next to that, so I know that the slope is that. If it's parallel to that, that's all I'm concerned about, is that the slope's the same. So, and it goes through this point. Well, guess what? We've got a point. And we have a slope, so I'm going to use point slope form. It is y minus y1 equals the slope, and then x minus x1. So we plug that stuff in. y1 is 4, so it would be y minus 4. Slope is negative 5 over 6. And then x minus negative 2, so x plus 2. And so this would be our equation. And that's all you got to do. Just write it like that, you're good to go. Okay, same idea, write an equation for the line perpendicular to y equals negative 5 over 6x plus 7 and passes through 5, negative 13. So once again, this is our slope. And if it's perpendicular, that means my new slope, slope of the other line, slope, is going to be 
Uh, excuse me, I was about to write 5 over 6. That's not right. we got to flip it, right? So it would be 6 over 5. And since negative 5 over 6 is negative, when we do the opposite, it makes it positive. So in this new equation, the slope is going to be 6 over 5. So it would be y minus y1, so y plus 13, equals 6 over 5, because that's the opposite reciprocal slope, and then x minus 5. And there you have it. There are, there's an example of a parallel line, perpendicular line. All you need is the slope, plug in the point, you're good to go. All right, last thing. What if I give you two points? Rather than, you know, in those previous examples, I said, well, here's the slope and here's a point. What if you're just given two points and you don't know the slope? Well, we'll figure out the slope. So the slope, there's a quick equation, it's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So in order to figure out the slope, we need to plug these in. And so what you're going to do is just pick one of these points as x1, y1, and the other point as x2, y2. And so we're going to plug in the x1, y1, and x2, y2 to figure out the slope. And that's going to be 4 minus y1, which is 8, over x2 is 6, minus x1, which is negative 5. So we get negative 4 over 6 minus negative 5 is 6 plus 5, which is 11. So that's going to be my slope. And then it says it passes through these two points. Well, you just pick one. It doesn't really matter which one. So you really have two possible correct answers. You're going to have y minus y1, which is 8, equals negative 4 over 11, and then x minus x1, which would be x plus 5. So this is OK, or you could pick the other point. And I know the equation says x1, y1, but it really doesn't matter. It just means pick a point on the line. So the two possible correct answers are y minus 4 equals negative 4 over 11, x minus 6, or the one we just found. So these are both excellent possible correct answers. All right, so that's all we want to talk about in terms of writing equations given a graph.